Hello, Insomniacs. I'm Curious Cyclops. And I'm Steve. We are Never Sleep Again TV. So we've been noticing that uh, on YouTube, our demographic swings kind of older, you know, from like the 24 to 35-year-old. Yeah. But yeah, I saw that. But guys, we just want you to know, like, we're hip. We're yeah. with it. We want to appeal more to the millennials. Yeah, let's so. get in there. So, Steve, what did you pick up? We brought our cool oh little my fidget God. spinners. Look, oh boy. I, I saw some kids at 7-Eleven playing with these things, but to be honest, I didn't touch a fidget spinner until I saw them <laughs> in Steve's room today. And I was like, you know what, Steve? We got to show this to the Insomniacs to let them know that we're still down with the kids. Yeah, man. Okay? But we got to make it cool, so we got to do a little trick about yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to do a really crazy stunt. So we're going to fidget spin on top of our pitch black. So, Steve, if we do this right, we got to take a sip and crack open these. This, so. this is scary, man. All right. One. Fuck. One. Two. All right. Now. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> All right, look this guy. Hold on, let me let me oh, do it. Oh, you fucked my. I, I know, I fucked up here. Let me do it once. Same time. Ready? Yeah. All right. Uh, Double high five. All right. Well, that. now we're gonna crack open a cold one with the boys, as the kids are saying. <laughs> so you know what? Oh. Hey, cheers, man, to another episode, and to many, oh, to Ooh. many more. That got a little fizzy. <laughs> a little bit. Ooh, I like when, the, when it looks like the smoke chemicals are coming off of it. Oh, God. That was well earned. Still haven't heard back from uh, Mountain Dew, but... Uh, who needs it? Yeah, if we aren't helping them increase their sales, I don't know who can. Right. Oh, thank you. Let's bring back Pitch Black. Bring back Pitch Black. And if you do, bring back number two. I guess. I guess. Because I really enjoyed Pitch Black 2 as well. I guess we don't have to bring it back if it's still there. But <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> bring back the two liters. How about yeah, that? Yeah, bring that shit Freaking back. You're nickeling and diming us. All right, so anyway, let's get on to the topic. Today's topic, uh, I'm just going to show off some of my bo horror box sets. Um, And, you know, no matter how big or small, as long as it's a set of some sort, I include it as a box set. You probably saw some of these in my uh, horror bonus gifts video, so you might see some again. But let me start out with the most logical one. So, again, since we're Never Sleep Again TV, might as well start with the Nightmare on Elm Street box set. I'm gonna, I'll be your Vanna White over here. Yes. Like, Ooh. Ooh. You could be my Wheel of Fortune. Ah. Is that who that is? The Wheel yeah. of Fortune? Cool. Yeah. So, again, uh, today, in my opinion, this is the best release ever of a box set. Um... Because, you know, it has the production notes, has the 3D glasses for that sequence in Freddy's Dead to Final Nightmare. Something I really freaking love is this awesome set. Not only does it have each film, including Wes Craven's new Nightmare, but it has this awesome um, DVD called the Nightmare Series Encyclopedia. Wow. So it has... I, dude, I can't even tell you how many hours of bonus stuff is on there. Like 50 hours or something? Like, wow. It has every music video ever associated with Nightmare on Elm Street, including like Dawkin and like the Fat Boys. Right. And um, it even has like a little puzzle game in it that once you unlock, like once you solve the puzzle and play the little game with the remote, like you have to navigate the school. Yeah. It's really cool and creepy, dude, but. I miss when DVDs used to have games. Yeah, interactive on. DVDs. Come on, like. Like I said, what the hell's happening with the TLC? Yeah. But anyways, like once you beat the game, it unlocked the boiler room, and the boiler room had tons of extra bonus stuff. Oh, wow. And even without beating the game, there was still a ton of content on here. So, like I said, if you own the Blu-ray um set of Nightmare on Elm Street, I still highly recommend the DVD set. I just think it's better in every single freaking way. So yeah, there there's the Nightmare on Elm Street box set. So naturally, I'm going to move on to Friday the 13th. Oh my god. So when I first heard about this and I found out that DeepTiscountDVD.com had it, because that was my number one source for buying movies that were new when I was a kid. But oh my god, I was so excited to get this. It's called Friday the 13th from Crystal Lake to Manhattan. So, you know what? The only thing that the Nightmare on Elm Street box set has on this one is this doesn't have every Jason movie in it. And I really don't know why it doesn't, because it's not like any movies came out after the box set was released. Right. So, of course, you know, it is missing Jason Goes to Hell, which is essential for your collection, since it is the precursor to um, Freddy vs. Jason. Not to mention that some people that are still kind of new 
don't realize the Necronomicon was actually in this movie. I think the dagger was too, wasn't it? From Evil Dead? I'm not sure. I kind of forget. Obviously, th- th- this isn't like the most rewatchable yeah, Jason movie. Yeah, it's been a while. But uh, Jason, so you know, Jason Goes to Hell wasn't included in the set in the set, which is a little stinky. Also, uh, Jason X was not included in the set. And you know what? When I was little, even when I was little, I thought this was so cool, so badass. I thought it was adventurous that they were putting Jason in space. Obviously, a lot of the veterans hate it. Right. But I like it for the charm because I don't hate bad horror movies. I actually enjoy them. Yeah. And obviously, Jason X was really campy. Something that's really interesting is when I discovered that there was a comic called Jason vs. Jason X. So that's awesome. I'm assuming it's it takes off where when Jason X lands back on Earth or whatever, and it's like back in time or something. Right. Or whatever happens at the end there. Um, but, you know, for the bonus disc... Of course, there's a lot of awesome crap on here. Like, you know, little documentaries and um, there's even features that show you all the memorabilia from back in the day. But still, the Nightmare on Elm Street bonus DVD is way better. So, you know, over if we're looking at completeness, Nightmare on Elm Street definitely beats this set. Right. And, you know, this it's not really fair because what set would this belong in? But, of course, you have to have Freddy vs. Jason. I'm pretty sure it came when they did that Blu-ray set that we, of course, can't get our fucking hands it, on. Really? I'm pretty sure that was in so there. It's, so it is interesting that um, Fr- Freddy vs. Jason, they decided to put it into the uh, Jason box set instead of the Nightmare on Elm Street box set. Right. Because this didn't come with a Nightmare on Elm Street Blu-ray set, did it? No. Yeah, I don't think so. I could be wrong. It may not be in there, but I thought it was. Well, I th- I'm pretty sure it is in the Friday the 13th Blu-ray I set. I thought so, I th- too. I think it is. Because I think I recall being like, oh, it's interesting that they, you know, lumped that together with Jason. So, again, so that's the Friday the 13th set. Overall, of course, it's awesome. I mean, it has little skinny, skinny DVDs, which I'm not a fan of. And people complained about it back in the day, too. That was, like, their thing they tried to do for a while to, like, reduce plastic. And, yeah. And, of course, they had to shove two damn movies in each set. Yeah. And, of course, it's two movies on one disc. So, you know, it's not like the greatest but it gets its job done because i didn't really own fr- too many friday the 13th movies separately until i got the set and one more thing that makes this inferior to nightmare on elm street this did not come with 3d glasses for uh friday the 13th part 3d nor does it include the 3d version actually i felt like it was only two or three years after this came out that they did release the th- Friday Thirteenth Three D yep, on DVD they with doing the glasses it individually. Yep. Yeah, and I was like, and then and then not too long after that, they released the uncut version of Friday Thirteenth, and I was like, damn, I wish they would have had all that included in a box set. Yeah. But all right, so to move on from there, oh, uh, you, you also saw some of my horror collectibles. This is my, in my opinion, obviously the best Evil Dead set that came oh, out. Yeah. So obviously it's just Evil Dead 1 and 2 and the Necronomicons. They're each a little different. And, you know, there's cool, uh, you know, pages in there with cryptic writing and all that. Um, of course, it doesn't have Army of Darkness. So to date, there was never actually a complete Evil Dead box set right. per se. I mean, hey, it would be cool one day if maybe they put the whole series in there when it's done. Yeah. And maybe Evil Dead 4 if that ever comes out. Dude, I have a feeling they might do something more of Evil Dead because of the series being successful. Yeah. And I'm still praying for Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, <laughs> even though I'm not going to give my hopes up. But, so, you know, this is definitely cool. I bet you it's probably expensive as hell at this point, but, you know, if you have this, good for you. And it's the best way you can get it. Don't forget, Insomniacs, if anybody knows how to fix that eye for us. Yeah, if you let know us how know. to replace the battery in the uh, eyeball for uh, the second Necronomicon, please let me know. All right, so for another box set, Th- this isn't really a box set per se. I mean, this is the only box set I own where it's a box set for one movie. Yeah, there are several discs to this thing, and it's just, you know, different cuts of the movie. Right. But it's actually really cool, and, you know, of course, it does come with a comic book, which is neat. Something, this is actually, I think, the last horror box that I got. Well, one of the last ones, actually, but it's one I wanted for so freaking long. So... I actually got this for a couple bucks used at FYE, the Omen Collection. And guess what? I love when they come with normal size DVD cases. So not only does it have, you know, Omen, uh, the Omen Part 1 through 3, it also has Part 4. And to be honest, I don't even think I realized there was a Part 4 <laughs> until I bought this box set. Because th- there was actually other Omen box sets that just had the three movies. Right. And maybe a bonus disc and the remake. But that's all I knew about. So until I saw this one, I didn't even know about Part 4. 
And I guess part four, The Awakening, essentially I think it's kind of like a reboot with a girl being this kid of the devil oh, instead wow. of Damien. But again, not everyone likes his part two and three for The Omen. I love all three. They're all freaking great. The Omen 2 is actually, I think, probably a little better than part three. But, dude, even part three is so quotable. It's so dark. Damien is great in all of them. So, like I said, I love this box set. I love the whole franchise. This doesn't come with the remake, and I really don't mind that, and I never will. <laughs> All right. Now, here's one that my friends told me is sought after because it's out of print, which obviously made it a little more expensive. But this is pretty... I, I think it's decently old, but uh, this is going. This is MGM's Scream Legends collection of Vincent Price. And, uh, yeah, obviously it's been out of print for a while. Um, He actually has eyeballs on it that kind of sh glisten and shine, which is a cool thing. Um, these are skinny DVD cases, but the movies it comes with makes it so worth it. So, we have Theater of Blood and Madhouse. Both of the doc uh, the Abominable Dr. Phoebe's movies, and I fucking love those two movies. You know what? If you like Saul and you didn't see many old horror films, please watch the Dr. Phoebe's movies. Because it might have been the first horror movie that had really crazy booby traps. So, that's pretty cool. And it also has Tales of Terror and Twice Told Tales. Rich Finder General, and a beautiful bonus disc that has an incredible documentary about Vincent Price. And you know what? I fucking love Vincent Price so much. When we get around to reviewing some of those, like maybe House on Haunted Hill, oh, yeah. I think we're going to have to do it in black and white. And who knows, maybe I'll have to get a, my uh, mustache shaved like his. But everyone knows I love Vincent Price. Especially when you go back to like the classic horror days and horror hosts. His voice was even just phenomenal. In fact, uh... When I was at Zombie Fest 2, um, like a month ago, my older friend told me that Vincent Price was pissed off at Michael Jackson because in the beginning of the Thriller music video, you know, Vincent Price has that whole opening couple of lines. Well, apparently, Vincent Price got fucked over and Michael Jackson never paid him anything wow. for doing the Thriller video. <laughs> and obviously, he was insulted because Thriller ended up becoming one of his biggest fucking hits ever, right. if not his biggest hit. So yeah, so Michael Jackson definitely fucked over Vincent Price. But hey, that's alright. I'm not I'm not gonna hold anything against the guy. Um Alright, now we're gonna move on to the Chucky Killer DVD collection. The reason why I picked this up over the regular box set that they had around the same time is just because it has and I don't f f see this often, but it has a really cool 3D textured cover for some reason. Like, I don't know why, but you know, it's really cool. Of course, it's one of those sets that is incomplete because for whatever reason at the time, they couldn't have Child's Play 1 in here because of who owned the rights. Right. But at this point, they're finally all together on, yep. the, on the Blu-ray set. But, you know, this is de definitely my favorite uh, Chucky set. Oh, man. This I was excited about because I didn't even know it existed. Something else I found used at FYE. I have the uh, From Dust Till Dawn box set, and it has all three movies. Wasn't there a TV series at some point, or yeah, are they working I on it? Yeah, I think it's either still going or recently canceled, but uh, yeah, oh. Robert Robert Rodriguez was doing it on, I think he runs the network, it's called the El Rey Network. Okay, well, you know, it do I, I, only re I think I only remember seeing the first two, but it does have the three, as, as far as I know, there's only three of these, but you know, it's a cool set, um, and you know, it has a slip case, so it's pretty cool, and I got that for a nice price. All right, on to another set. Now this is nowhere near complete because I fucking love the Amityville Horror. In fact, the like at, at least the first few they terrified me as a kid. But um, the Amityville Horror Collection, I love this set. It has part one, part two, the possession, and part three, the demon. And I love all three of those. So this is a pretty solid collection. Especially because a lot of people didn't see the sequels. A lot of people either saw the remake or just the original, but not yep. the sequels. But of course, it had to come with an awesome classified bonus DVD, which, you know, has the real story about the Amityville Horror. Um, it actually has two different documentaries about it, which is pretty cool. And then there's like a behind the scenes of the remake. But um, speaking of Amityville Horror... One of my fucking goals as a sequel junkie is to collect every Amityville Horror on DVD. And I regret sleeping on doing that. Do you know why? In recent years, the sequels went up in price so fucking bad, dude. Oh, really? So bad. Like, for instance, um, not too long ago on eBay, I was looking up, like, 
Amityville Dollhouse and the Amityville The Clock, um, which is I think it's part four. But anyway, all the sequels after part three, which there were still several of, especially Next Generation. I love Amityville Horror Next Generation, but all of those are very expensive. I think they're around the thirty dollar used oh, wow. price range, which is pretty insane for used DVDs. Like that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So hopefully one day I get around to getting the rest. And the latest one has been supposed to be coming out for ages, but it still hasn't come out yet. But I'm pretty sure it's been done I, for I years. I think it's dated for this Halloween. Really? Yeah. Well, if that I forget what it's called, but if it finally comes out, I'll be excited because the trailer actually looked decent. Yeah. And they had that redheaded kid from uh, Shameless. I forget his real name. Oh, the, actor. the kid from Gotham. I don't know his name. Yeah, either. but you know, so that'll be interesting. All right. Stephen King, as you know from the Art It video, he was a big, big part of my childhood. Like I said, I got all the double VHSs from Blockbuster of his, like Storm of the Century and It and all those. So I um, I got this for Christmas when I was a kid. It's a Stephen King box set. And, you know, of course it has regular size DVD cases, which is really nice. It comes with Misery, The Dark Half, Needful Things, and Carrie. And until I got this set, I did not see The Dark Half or Needful Things. Those are both freaking awesome they're now two of my favorite stephen king movies so they're definitely a solid set but obviously there's a lot of great stephen king horror oh, dvds absolutely. and i own a lot of other stephen king stuff that's why when you brought that i was like i wonder what's in that set because there's so much yeah like, the right possibilities are endless it must have kind of been hard to choose yeah um, really so oh my god one of the freaking horror films that scared me the most as a kid was the exorcist uh, pretty much, uh, m my neighbor, Sean, who lived up the street at the time from my mom's house, was like, Oh, Andy, you know, we should watch this horror movie, The Exorcist. I was, like, nine years old or ten, so I was still re a really good kid. And I was like, all right, well, let me just go see if my mom's okay with it. So right away, I run down the street, and I'm like, Hey, Mom, can I watch a horror film with my friend Sean up the street? She goes, oh, okay, what do you want to watch? And I said, The Exorcist, right away. She goes, no, you are not <laughs> watching The Exorcist. Like, you are not allowed to watch that. And I was like, oh, okay. So obviously, I knew it had to be really, really good. Because at this point, my mom was pretty lenient with horror films, unless she knew they were really bad. But apparently, that was on my mom's naughty list. So what did I do? I went up to Sean's house, and I watched it. <laughs> Oh my god, at the end of The Exorcist, and of course it was the version you've never seen before, it was that cut, but yeah. me and my friend Sean literally stared at each other for several seconds, and we couldn't move like while the credits were rolling, because wow. I was that terrified. I had dreams of Reagan for several years, so of course this beautiful Exorcist box set, oh my god, definitely one of my favorite box sets. It, it wasn't uh, a lot of money. It has a beautiful foil paint cover and backside, so it shines and glistens. And I really respect it because it has the original cut of The Exorcist. It has the version you've never seen before. It has Exorcist 2, The Heretic, and it has The Exorcist 3. And it has both of the friggin' prequels, uh, Exorcist Dominion and Exorcist The Beginning. And you know what? A lot of people didn't like the sequels. I understand why people don't like 2 so much. Because right. it was more maybe like a psychological horror film. But, dude, 3... At this point, everyone agrees that 3 is a really good masterpiece. In fact, it got special releases on Blu-ray, as we know. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if they ever made an actual Blu-ray box set, have they, for The Exorcist? I don't believe they made a box set. I know that they all are out there on Blu-ray and that there's like a special edition. I think it's like the 30th or 40th anniversary oh, wow. of just the original Exorcist. Well, I highly recommend The Exorcist to all of the horror collectors out there. Um, like I said, it's it's as complete as box sets can get. And there's no entries left out. And even both cuts of the original and both prequels are there. So that's pretty amazing to me. I really appreciate their effort in that set. So, all right, here's something funny. Um, I actually already owned The Howling, The Marsupials, uh, The Rebirth, and Freaks. But when I saw this at FYE FY used for a good price, I had to get it. And it's a tin box set. And I think this is only tin box set that i own oh yeah so it has it's the how it's called the howling trilogy so it has three of the sequels turned out when i opened it up it's actually the same goddamn editions of the ones <laughs> i already had so it's a standalone of the howling three and then it's the howling um five and six double feature so you know what i essentially rebought it 
for the tin box, but I don't care. Yeah. All that means is whenever we get around to talking about the howling, I could probably give away my doubles as a prize. So I, I you know, I am glad to have this just because it's pretty neat. Oh yeah. I mean, it is kind of bizarre to have a box set without the original and just sequels, but you know, it's pretty cool. Now, plus, for all I know, there might be a rights issue with the sequels. Yeah. There, there always seems to be issues when it comes to box sets. All right. Um, I actually got Steve this on Blu-ray. It came in a thinner case, but um, this is the uh, Blood Trilogy, which is Blood Feast, 2000 Maniacs, and Color Me Blood Red. This is a solid set. I actually had no idea, really, about H.G. Uh, Lewis, but, um, you know, this was a really good introduction. So I watched Blood Feast first, and mm. it was incredible. It's, like, kind of like an Egyptian theme slasher flick. It's confusing. you got to watch it yourself, though. It's a solid movie. Then I saw 2000 Maniacs, which was incredible. I watched that with my friend, actually. Color Me Blood Red. i got to rewatch it because I didn't really get to finish it, but, um, this made me fall in love with H.G. Lewis. Um, and you know what? I discovered that there is a sequel to Blood Feast, Blood Feast 2. Obviously, it's not in the set because this was made way later in the 2000s. But, you know, I think it's cool that, you know, he went back to make a sequel. But, yeah, yeah. this is pretty cool. Now, there's, like, two sequels to 2000 Maniacs, too, right? Um, you know what? For Yeah, I think there's only one for 2000 Maniacs. Because I thought, I know uh, there was 2001 Maniacs. Yeah, you know, what's funny? I think I have that. Alright, hold on a second while I pick I'm gonna this up. Vamp while you look for it. Give them a nice vape clip. <laughs> I said vamp. <laughs> yeah, every time you say vamp, it makes me think of vape. The, uh, it's weird, the first H.G. Lewis movie I ever saw was The Wizard of Gore, I believe. Yeah, I saw that too. And that's because they did uh, a remake with crispin glover from back to the future the guy who played marty mcfly's dad and uh i saw the remake first and then saw it was an original movie and was like oh well i'll rent that off of netflix and then that was the first experience i had with him huh, well uh i mean thanks for reminding me but guys i think i left 2001 maniacs in my car and i don't feel like going to get it but you know the cover really stands out because robert england is on the fucking cover as what looks like some kind of Confederate general with an eye patch. Yeah. I'm not sure of his role because I haven't seen the sequel yet. But yeah, it is interesting that not only is there Blood Feast 2, but there's a sequel to 2000 Maniacs. So again, this is an awesome set. And uh, this box set actually comes from Something Weird Videos. And they do have a weird library of releases. They even have like Church of Satan releases <laughs> from like rituals at the church. So, you know, that's a fun set. Oh, yeah. All right. Only got a few more left, I see. Um, so, again, you guys probably saw this if you watched our, uh, you know, our, what was it, our bonus? Oh, no, in our foreign horror. Yeah, in our foreign horror yeah. video, I showed off this beautiful Spanish horror set, and this is the Blind Dead collection. So, again, it has awesome freaking booklet. It has a bonus DVD where it's a documentary pretty much about the director, and it has all four blind dead films in actual cases so not only that but it looks great on the shelf because it is in a coffin so this box set is awesome i actually didn't spend too much on this but th this actually is the last box that i purchased and oh my god i love it and god what is how do you even describe the texture of this it looks like a it's, fake leather simulation yeah, like that's kind of almost what it feels like too it's like a pleather it's like a plastic yeah, leather it's, yeah it's like a plastic leather case but it's pretty damn cool all right, so to finish up the box sets, I got one more. And, again, I, I, I show this off in one of our other videos. But, um, so, yeah, this is how we got the bus that you see up front. So, you know, this is, it came out a couple years ago. It's called the Monster Legacy gift set. So it has, uh, you know, the Frankenstein Legacy set with the Frankenstein sequels and, you know, House of Frankenstein, which is the crossover. I think this one also has Wolfman vs. Frankenstein. Unless that's on the Wolfman set, but, you know, it has the Wolfman movie along with other werewolf films that were made by Universal. And then it has Bela Lugosi's uh, Dracula set. And uh, so it has um, the sequels and it has House of Dracula, which is a another kind of House of Frankenstein deal where they cross over. So, you know what? Out of my box sets, that's actually all I own in my horror collection, but I feel like that's a pretty solid collection of oh, box yeah. sets. I mean... And, again, a big reason why I get box sets is not only for the bonus stuff it comes with, but 
I just love the fact that it's all neat and contained into one box. And they look great on the shelf. The only horror films in my personal bedroom are my box sets because they're on display. Everything else that's just like a single DVD, I kind of just keep those stored away in a cabinet nice and neat. But yeah, box sets, I just like to display them. So that's why I have so many. Uh, you know what? Oh, yeah. We do have one more. Let me grab the Phantasm box set. Oh, yeah. we, we did show that off a little bit before. Yeah, we did. But it's over there, so I might as well grab it. Once again, don't have the Halloween set on us because we're not trying to start a fight. Dude, don't even bring <laughs> up the freaking Halloween set. Ugh, I hate that. Dude, they better make a new Halloween box set for that new movie. Yeah. But yeah, so again, here's the Phantasm. It has a beautiful like holographic foil paint cover. Um, You know, the, the cases are pretty cool. It's standard Blu-ray cases, really. Well, um, although they, they did do the reversible covers. What do you mean? Look. On these ones? Yeah, look. I think I totally forgot this. So if you look at these, they're just kind of one of the spheres. Yeah, yeah, they're they really plain. The Roman numeral. It's, yeah, it's just Roman numeral with the ball. But you can actually pull out the cover. Oh my god, so those are like the classic movie, movie posters, classic I guess. Cover. See, this is something that I'm still new to is Blu-rays. So I always, always, always really love when they add reversible covers. Um, and I don't really care if it's the classic poster art or it's new art done by an artist for the set. I, as long as they're reversible and they give you an option, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And again, it comes with a nice book. Um, and it came with an awesome double-sided poster that has the artwork for the new uh, restoration. And it has the one side of the poster is the box set cover. But, you know, Phantasm box set, I'm just glad we finally got one in oh, Region yeah. 1 because we never had a box set in America. But again, you know, we didn't get a sphere, but oh well, I'm not going to cry forever about that. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, so me and Steve both own this one. But yeah, for yeah. box sets, that's actually it. So, I guess that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for watching. Want to take one more sip before we say goodbye? Sure. Might as well. Sometimes it gets a little stuffy in this garage. Oh, a little bit. Uh, cheers. Cheers to another episode done. It's going to suck. When they take these off the shelves, that's going to really suck. Uh -oh. All right, well, thank you again for watching Insomniacs. That's going to be it. I'm Curious Cyclops. And I'm Steve. And this is Never Sleep Again TV. Thank you so much for watching. Comment and subscribe. And make sure you watch all our other videos, okay? We have plenty for you so far. <laughs> Haven't even been out two weeks yet. All right, thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys.